seen something white in the sea and we don't know if it's a fender or polystyrene but we thought we'd go and check it out. Sounds like a posh part of town. It certainly does, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, behind us is a Morgos. It was great, it protected us from the, the wind, which is what it's intended to do. And, and, and touring around the island was really pretty. Yeah, that was great. Oh, the Cora is beautiful. Beautiful, absolutely stunning place. Yes. Oh, the one thing you can't get sorted out at uh, a Morgos, oh, yeah. you cannot buy small gas bottle refills. It's not, just not. No. So we're going to Kifanisi, there's an anchorage there that's our preferred anchorage, our anchorage choice A and um, we'll stay there for one night yeah. and then we go to Eos where we meet up once again with our friend Jim on our buddy boat Acheron. Yay, so looking forward to seeing Jim again. Yes. We've seen something white in the sea and we don't know if it's a fender or polystyrene but we thought we'd go and check it out. If it's polystyrene, we may be able to bring it in and get it out of the sea. If it's a fender, we get a free fender. <laughs> Yay! Got it, Fuzzy! It's a little chippy step fender. It's our new step fender. <laughs> Looks like we just got ourselves a new step fender. How's it going there, Admiral? Cool. Just doing the other end. Cool. <laughs> Thank you, universe. Yep. Because <laughs> our old one was definitely well buggered. Oh, and we're very near to the bay that we're going to pull into. So we're going into that bay there. This is us here. And we're doing 5.8 knots. So this anchorage that we're coming up to behind me, um, there are several cats, monoholes, and a big stink boat in there. And we're unsure, uh, looking through the binoculars, whether they're all tied back to shore. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in there, have a cruise round, see if they're tied back or whether they're free swinging. And then, if necessary, if we see a space and they are tied back, we'll come back out, we'll prepare our lines and prepare ourselves, and then go back in and tie back along with everybody else. If they're free swinging and there's a space, we'll just drop the hook and do what we normally do. So I'm not sure what the name of this bay is, but we're on the Greek island of Kufenisi in the northeast corner. And this bay is absolutely stunning. It's busy as because it's so stunning. Check this out. How beautiful is this water? I am up with the sunrise this morning, mostly because I didn't really get much sleep last night. This bay that we're in is an absolutely gorgeous bay, but it is not good for overnight anchorages because even as you can see, it's very, very flat at the moment. The slight swell that does come in causes you to roll and we've been rocking and rolling all night. Not vastly, but just enough to not allow sleep. So we're up early this morning. We will be moving on as soon as we've got the boat ready. Great anchorage though. A uh, good sandy bottom, good holding, very small weedy patches. This is pretty much sand all throughout the bay. The holding is good, um, but unfortunately just rocking and rolling. Oh, and one more thing about this anchorage. It's very much a day tripper anchorage. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven boats, including us in here who stayed the night. But yesterday, three times that many were here anchored for the day. They all left for the night, possibly because of the roly roly. Who knows? I think that last night while we were down below trying to get some sleep, ABC went out dancing because she's done a couple of pirouettes around the anchor chain this morning. <laughs>
seems as though every time we come around the northern end of Eos that the wind decides that it's going to teach us a couple of lessons. And this time I was watching the wind and it was running about 20, 25 knots and I could see that further out it was coming up and building up to 30. So I said, okay, let's reef in that head sail and that'll be just right by the time that wind gets to us. And something we've been keeping an eye on for the last couple of weeks was the furling line for the head sail. The outer sheath had started to fray. So basically, when we tried to reef, the sheath had completely separated and we could actually see the main core. And then the sheath got bunched up on the outside of the jammer and so we couldn't winch the furling line through the jammer. Luckily, <laughs> my little inner voice early that morning had sort of said to me, um, how good are you at remembering a rolling hitch? So I had a really strong feeling to get our RYA handbook out and remind myself how to tie a rolling hitch. Of course, when um, Baz said to me, oh, <laughs> The, light, the uh, furling line's not coming through the jammer. I went, oh, it's okay, let's get another line. I can do a rolling hitch. We'll at least be able to support it round another winch while we work out what to do. So we did that. And uh, we also managed to use um, black electrical tape to wrap around the outside of the sheath and make it slim enough to be able to pull it through the jammer. This little bit of black electrical tape is now our eyeball for how far we can actually let this furling line go out. This is our enforced reefing point basically. So for now, we're having to run with a reefed head sail. This is our furling line for our mainsail. And as you can see, we have the same issue here. And again, we've put black electrical tape as our eyeball to how far we can actually let the mainsail out. Both of these lines will be replaced as soon as we find somewhere that sells the correct size line. Hello. Bonjour, Hello. 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 How are you doing? You're really well. It's good to see you. Yeah, nice to see you. Hello, Ev. Barry. Barry, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hang on. This is... Uh, you must finesse us, my old friend. Hi. Hi. Uh, how are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> good to see you again. <laughs> Alrighty. First things first, after coming ashore, get rid of our rubbish. It's always fun trying to locate the nearest bin. Next mission is to go from this beach to the main port where we're going to ask if there's a Chandler's and also find out where in the Hora is the uh, place that we can buy a refilled gas bottle for cooking just after midday now about 12.30 and we're starting to feel the heat of summer the first week of July. Well we went to the port police and he pointed us in the direction of a small Chandler in town here in the port of Eos and he didn't have enough 10 millimeter rope. Uh, so we went to a rental car place who the Chandler recommended. Jacobs. Jacobs. And they said, no, we don't sell it here, but we have another shop just about 700 to 900 meters out of town where you will buy it. We're on a mission. Yeah. We were able to buy the right size line in the right lengths at Jacobs Hardware and Chandler store just outside of town. And it was also the place where we were able to swap out our cooking gas. Unfortunately, we were so excited about completing our mission that we forgot to film anything. Just woke up this Monday morning here at the Greek island of Eos and there's a fog bank rolling around the side of the island. That's pretty impressive. Also in the fog there, just past the yacht, there's the silhouette of a very large motor cruiser. We're both feeling gutted. We are anchored in a small bay, a beautiful bay, on the Greek island of Eos. And as has been our daily ritual, once the sun is up and we're producing power, we power up our instruments to transmit our AIS signal and also just to check the water depth and wind speed and all that sort of stuff. So this morning 
uh, Monday morning I did as I usually do, powered everything up and then went below. Next thing we know there's all sorts of alarms coming out of the chart plotter. It comes up onto the deck, has a look at things, there's no AIS and no GPS. So I has a look at the Raymarine Autopilot, if you remember the story about that one, and it's dead. The display is dead again. Yeah. And it took out the GPS and AIS. So I emptied the locker, disconnected the cables from the autopilot, powered the system back up again, and thankfully the GPS and AIS are now displaying correctly on the plotter. So the autopilot saga continues. Yeah. We have had a couple of comments from some viewers who are more knowledgeable on this subject than I, and they were suggesting that if the diodes that Nile replaced in Marmaris had gone, then that was indicative of a polarity uh, situation with the power to the unit. So what I've got to do is, and certainly not today because it is a scorcher, what I've got to do is I've got to get into the wiring that the guy who installed the autopilot uh, sort of like jerry-rigged because he had to change the, uh, the pins from the old style to the new style. I'm going to have to strip all of his wiring back and check that it's all connected as it should be and uh, just make sure that that's mm. not going to be an issue because if we get this re repaired again yeah. and we haven't checked the wiring then it's just going to fail again. again. Yeah. So that's that saga. Yeah. Bummer. Mm. Anyway, look it could have been worse, it could have happened when we really needed it <laughs> out to sea or something. So. Yeah. Uh, anyway. So there you go. Yeah. We'll keep you up to date on what happens. Yes. And you're emptying this locker today because... Because... You love to do it. I just love getting in lockers. <laughs> no, doing this today because we've got to get the autopilot removed because we are sending the autopilot back to Marmaris via Gymnas Finesus on the big boat Acheron. Because he's going that way. Yeah, he's going back there, yeah. So that's, yeah, quite fortuitous, isn't it? Yeah. All right, uh, I'll put this down now and I'll give you a hand. Oh, no, oh, there it goes. No. And on that there boat is our buggered up autopilot on its way to Marmaris in Turkey for another repair from the magical nail. And of course, big thanks to Jim for being the courier. If you're enjoying following our journey, don't forget to become a subscriber and click the bell icon so that you get notified when we release brand new episodes of Sailing ABC. Leave a comment too. We enjoy reading them and we always reply to you.